What about head injury and uh, dizziness? So I see patients on the acute trauma ward in St. Mary's Hospital. Um, balance is function is probably the commonest cause of the patients with head injury on the trauma unit. And this manifests with problems with gait. If, uh, depending on the severity of the head injury, that mm. may or may not recover to a greater or lesser extent or faster or slower extent. So I imagine in, in general practice, you will be seeing patients more on the milder end of the spectrum, mm. at least r with a recent head injury. So there are some specific diagnoses you need to look out for. At least in the major trauma ward, uh, there are some very clear cut diagnoses that we find. So 40% of patients have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Induced by the head injury? Yes. Mm. Uh, in terms of the gait disorder, we find 70% of patients have a, a gait disorder which recovers over time according to the severity of the head injury. The other diagnoses we pick up are, at least in the context of major trauma, uh, vestibular nerve transection, which is a fracture mm. of the uh, vis well, transection of the vestibular nerve due to trauma, and you will get accompanying hearing loss. That occurs in 20%. Uh, and uh, a form of headache which has the phenotype of migraine, typically vestibular migraine. And that affects 30% of patients. So those are the acute patients. But we also have a group of patients that I have not seen in the acute setting but have been referred to us in the clinic. And uh, we have a series of patients where we've looked at outcomes and diagnoses. So at patients referred to our clinic at 6 to 18 months following head injury with continuing dizziness problems, the first take-home message I would like people to, to take from this is that our outcomes at two years is 80% free of symptoms. Mm -hmm. So these are patients preferred with refractory dizziness. And so how did we achieve that? We achieved that by making specific diagnoses and treating those specific diagnoses. Now the majority of patients with head injury, are, interestingly, have multiple vestibular diagnoses. So in the acute situation, 52% of patients have two or more vestibular diagnoses. So a gait ataxia with or without BPPV, without a headache that looks like vestibular migraine, vestibular transection, etc. So you have a combination of diagnoses. Now, if you look at those diagnoses, it becomes immediately clear that in head injury, uniquely, you often have a combination of peripheral ear and central brain problems. So that is quite a unique combination and presents challenges to rehabilitating these patients. So the step-by-step -step approach is, one, make the individual specific diagnoses, two, treat those individual specific diagnoses, and then three, refer to rehab once you make those diagnoses and start them on the treatment for those particular diagnoses. If you have that approach, mm -hmm. you get extremely good outcomes, even with patients who have had a poor outcome for many, many months.